Very good. Well, welcome everybody. My name is Jeremy Staley, and this is the Neighborhood Traffic Calming Public Meeting uh, for North Union Avenue from Admiral Boulevard to Edison Street. Um, I appreciate you all watching this video, um, and uh, thank you for your time. Uh, with me tonight um, are two of the City of Tulsa engineers. We have Russell Bausch uh, from the Traffic Group, and we also have um, Frank Robert from the uh, Transportation Group that is joining us. Um, and we'll tell a little bit more about that, uh, how they implement on their course. This project being a traffic calming project highly involves Russell. Um, I work for CEC and we are a consulting firm that works on contract with the city of Tulsa and we help them manage um, and maintain the neighborhood traffic calming program. So more likely if you are uh, get a phone call from me uh, or you call us about the program, you're gonna be visiting with me or one of my assistants. And so this, program is obviously being recorded and I'm talking to you right now. Um, let's see. Um, I want to talk about the beginnings of this project. This project started out when Ms. Sharon Foley um, ended up submitting an application for the traffic calming program back in October of 2020. And by doing so, Ms. Foley became what we call a traffic calming advocate for this street. Uh, in 2021, Ms. Foley moved away from the neighborhood and she handed that torch off to Ms. Stephanie Branch to continue with the speed hump um, process. Um, now, that was all done in 2020, but because funds were depleted in, 20, uh, in 2017, uh, we had to pause the program and we weren't able to move forward with any more traffic studies. So uh, we weren't able to pick that back up until uh, the Tulsa voters and, but passed the Improve Our Tulsa 2 bond issue, which contained funds to continue with this program. So we were given the green light to move forward with this in February of 2020. And of course, the pandemic hit, slowed everything down again. So we barely got off the start, and had to hit pause until the economy started to open back up again and people started driving around. And that occurred in June, July of 2020. So we were able to pick up um, doing those studies at that point in time. So we accrued a lot of studies uh, from 2017 all the way up to the summer of 2020. Um, so we were not able to do this traffic study until September of 2021. Uh, so it took a good while to get there. Now, on a traffic study, we have two primary warrants that must be met uh, in order to move forward with the speed hunt process in, in that they qualify. So the first one is the 85th percentile of the speeds measured on that street uh, must exceed, uh, must be over five mile per hour above the, the speed limit. In the case of this street, we have a 25 mile per hour speed limit. Um, and we end up taking that data over a seven day period of time. So we, we get a good measure of what all is going on in that neighborhood. On this particular project, our 85th percentile was 36.2 mile per hour. It was pretty fast. People um, have been moving at a pretty good clip around here. And I imagine you would um, uh, believe that as well. The second uh, warrant is the ADT average daily traffic must be between 600 and 5,000 vehicles per day. And on our project, we had 769 vehicles per day, so we met that. Now, if both of these primary warrants are met, there's a few other factors we look at to make sure um, that we can still pass eligibility. Um, I'm just going to list these real quickly. The street shall provide access to budding residential property. Um, this is not intended to go into a commercial property, a commercial area. It's meant for residential uh, properties. Uh, the street must not have more than one traffic lane in each direction. It's not intended to be for primary arterials or uh, higher uh, level streets. It's intended for neighborhood streets. The street segment must be at least 300 foot in length. The street should have a regulatory speed limit of 30 mile per hour or less. And the street shall have curb and gutter to prevent vehicle runarounds. Um, on some of the streets in this particular neighborhood, we had to limit uh, where the speed humps go because part of the neighborhood uh, in Eastern Heights does have some open section. So we weren't able to put speed humps there. That's not an issue on Union uh, for that particular street. And then um, speed humps won't be installed on a residential collector where we have traffic signals at both ends of the street. That designates that it is a higher classified uh, roadway, and so we're, we do not put them on for that particular reason. Now, once a project warrants and passes all these other uh, eligibility requirements and construction funding is available, the next step is to go through the petition and endorsement process. Now, the, um, the, we provide a list of addresses uh, along that street to our street advocate, 
And it's their job to go out and to get at least 80% um, of the houses that are accommodated, people living in them, we need at least 80% of those people to respond that they're either in favor or against the speed hunts. Um, and now there's occasional houses where people don't live there anymore, the home is for sale or it's an Airbnb. And in that case, those homes are excluded from that list. Uh, in the case of this project that we hit exactly, uh, we hit 82% on this particular project. Another um, thing that we have to qualify is two thirds of all the homes along that street or the residences have to be in favor of this. And in the case of this project, we had 100%, 82% of everybody that's, 100% of everybody that signed, meaning 82% of the residences on the street were in favor. We didn't have a single no on that petition. So we definitely met that. Uh, the next part of that is the endorsement process. Um, if there's an HOA that is involved in the project that is part of where this street goes through, they have to sign off on it as well. In, the, in our case, we did not need that for Easton Heights. Um, so we're good there. So once the petition endorsement process is complete, we design a speed hump layout. Um, these speed humps are, are placed at spacing as directed um, by the traffic calming program and design criteria. And in that design criteria, we have specific distances we'd like these speed humps to be. We don't want them to be too close. We don't want them to be too far away. If they're too close, uh, well, it's expensive to add a lot of speed humps onto the particular street. It also can become a nuisance. If people are driving over speed humps every 100 feet. We certainly wouldn't want that as that is not the intention of this project. It is intended to reduce the speed and the traffic counts on the street. Um, we have a max distance that we try to maintain, and that's at 600 feet. That's because studies have shown if you extend that thing out considerably, 700, 800 feet, people accelerate quickly in between the speed humps to try and make up lost time. So we try to limit those to uh, 600 feet or less. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, we can go over the speed hump layout on this particular project. And then we'll talk about the striping and sign locations as well. Let me share my screen real fast. Where are we? Okay, Frank, I mean, Robert, can you see my screen? The, the... Yes, I can. Okay. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so we are starting at the south end of Union Avenue on the top left corner. Uh, that is Charles, Bull Charles Boulevard. The north arrow is to the right. And we have a match line shown over on this right side of the page for this top view. And on the bottom view, we have a match line A there as well. So um, think of it this plan moving up this way, it hits this match line, then you move down to the bottom view and move across. Our speed humps are shown by these large black rectangles. And we show where the signs are located. And we have some other uh, directions here uh, for how these uh, speed humps will go into the, the people that are constructing them. On this particular case, um, I've shown an orange uh, speed hump located here. And this was a comment that was provided prior to this meeting. Mr. Mark Sweet lives in one of these homes over here. I believe it's uh, 15 or 19 North Union Avenue. Um, he took a look at these plans and told me, hey, we've got a pretty steep curve, vertical curve right in between my home and uh, that speed hump. And he thought that's, that grade would be pretty high. And he suggested moving this up where the grade is a little flatter. So we went ahead and showed that on there. I think it's a good thing to go ahead and move that speed hump up a little bit higher up on that ridge to where the grade isn't as high. Um, that would help for uh, people driving when it is icy conditions or snowy conditions. So I'm gonna move on to the next sheet here real quickly to show where the next speed hump is. Uh, just to get an idea where this one is located. We've got Amber Boulevard here and then Archer Street just immediately to the north of that. So we show the distances between the speed humps here or the distance from the speed hump to the match line with these uh, given call outs here. So our second speed hump on this project would be just north of Archer Street, uh, right before you get to the bridge going over 412. And then we've got a pretty good gap until we get just north of Reconciliation Way See, we've got a speed hump here right on that match line D, um, which is in between Reconciliation Way going off to the east and going off to the west. Uh, then the next speed hump we've got, you can see the distances here. We've got about 470 feet or so until we hit this next speed hump. 
Uh, this one is in between Cameron Street and West Easton Street. Um, I might also point out these numbers here on the, the page. Those are the address, the home address uh, numbers, uh, just to give you an idea where you might be at. I know you can probably rewind or move forward with this video to see where your house is to get a better understanding of that. Now, we, we do call out where the speed, uh, the stop signs are located on here. We have stop signs that are at the Easton Street intersection. Uh, we try to keep the speed humps further away from those just because people are going to be braking and we don't want that bump to occur during that time. So moving north of West Easton Street, uh, that is where we end up with a, a median and a divided roadway. Uh, we've got a northbound and a southbound direction. Uh, so there we've got uh, a few more speed humps just south of Easton Place, as you see here. And then our final speed humps are just south of the Easton Court. Um, on this bottom view. So um, I know you could rewind or fast forward through this if you have any questions. So feel free to do that in the or to see where your house is on this video. I'm going to show typical sections of what these speed hunts look like here. Um, we've got the, the plan view that is shown right in the middle here. And this shows a an, like an overhead view of the what these speed hunts look like as well as what the striping looks like. These speed humps are, they're 22 foot long as you drive over them. And then the width of them is you, you go from the curbing gutter in two foot and then you have a tapered section there. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a moment. But let me point out here first, the striping. So we've got these striping, uh, high, high visibility striping marks that are put um, on the speed hump so you can see them. Also, we have a sign that goes at the front corner of every one of these speed humps just off um, behind the curb. We show a speed hump sign with an arrow pointed down. This is done for a couple of reasons. One is, again, visibility, people to see, hey, we've got a speed hump there. Uh, if the, the striping, if, if it ever wears down thin where you can't see it as well, you'll have that sign there to give you a visual cue of the speed hump. And secondly, uh, when the city goes through with snow plows, when we have uh, ice or snow there, they can easily see and know where the speed hump is based off of the sign. Because if you're just looking for snow, you're not going to be able to see a difference uh, where that speed hump is. So the signs are important for that reason as well. This shows a uh, section AA goes right through this sheet. So this shows what a car would look like going over that speed hump. So picture coming in from the left, you go over this parabolic shaped section and that parabolic shaped area is about over a six foot span. And then there's a 10 foot flat area on top. And then you have a parabolic shape to go down. This particular geometry is, is very easy, smooth going in a vehicle. Um, and as long as that vehicle is not lowered greatly, um, basically, if it is a manufacturer's type vehicle, any one of those wheelbases should be able to navigate over these. It's a so vehicle shouldn't be scraping on the bottom of these speed humps. Also point out, they're only three and a half inches tall at their max height. So these are not very tall. Now, section BD here, this is right on the edge of the speed hump. And this shows the, the curb face. We have a two foot gap in here to allow people to be able to ride bicycles or strollers or whatever without going over the speed hump. But we also have a taper here, and that taper is done over a 24 inch length. Um, that would prevent you having a sharp edge. If you were riding the bike and you um, tires moved slightly onto that speed hump, it'd be a very gradual transition. So they would not um, feel a jolt or cause your, your bicycle to um, flip over or anything. Um, this again gives it dimensions for the typical pavement marking. And uh, in the case of the uh, section where we go through that divided area. We've got that median in the middle. You'll just see one of these painted on that because we don't have that two-way traffic. Yes. So those are the details for it um, and our layout. I am now going to share one more uh, drawing with you. And this goes into explaining um, how this project is going to be constructed. So I mentioned how we have our Improve Our Pulse of Two funds that provide for this project. And in the case of this project, we have um, two projects going on around the same time. One is there is a non-arterial maintenance zone project, 4069, and that is being managed by Robert Frank with the Transportation Group at the City of Tulsa. And in this particular project, the, the orange colored streets 
that you see on this map, that is the, the streets that are in, um, comprise this project. And I'll let Robert talk about that just a little bit more, but what we have going on, part of this street falls within that project. And so we don't wanna construct these speed humps in the near future because that transportation project is gonna be coming on the keels later. We anticipate it starting in the summer uh, or spring of next year. So we don't wanna construct these speed humps only to have them get ripped out uh, through street maintenance project. And so uh, we're gonna hold off on doing those and we'll incorporate those into the bid set plans that, the, that a contractor will bid on and we'll construct that sometime next year. I've got an area shown in a green box here and this area will be constructed by city of Tulsa uh, street maintenance staff. And they, um, they will construct these speed humps when this particular project is up next in the construction queue, which I believe we've got a couple more right in front of this project, two or three more. And um, the city of Tulsa will move forward with that. Typically they construct one of these speed humps in a day's time and they will commonly shut down um, a block. They'll require traffic to move around in that area, but they, they shouldn't interfere with cars getting the driveways adjacent to that. They would set up the, the road close signs. They give advance notice on the adjacent blocks further up and down the roadway, but they'll just close off that particular part of the street to allow them to construct those speed humps. And like I said, they'll, they'll construct one a day typically. So hopefully it will not take very long. Um, also, they will install those signs on the same day when they construct each speed hump. And the striping will sometimes wait longer because the city of Tulsa has a contract with um, a, a vendor to come in and install those and they're installing striping all across the city. So sometimes that lags uh, a few weeks to a few months, but just to let you know, those signs will still be there to give advance notice, uh, warning of those uh, particular speed humps. So again, the area in the blue box will be, that was uh, north of Easton Street and south of Edison. That particular part will be constructed in that maintenance zone project. And then everything south of Easton Street uh, down to Admiral Boulevard will be constructed by the city of Tulsa forces. I'm gonna now turn this over to Robert Frank and he can talk more about this particular project. So Frank, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen uh, where they can see you better. I was about to say, can you bring that screen right back up? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Do the same thing. <laughs> okay. It's a perfect map. Very good. If you want me to pan around, just let me know, Robert. I'll uh, just keep it right there. So kind of as Jeremy alluded to earlier, uh, this project is also funded with approval of Tulsa 2 funds, approximately 3.9 million worth. The project 4069 is going to be basically a typical arterial, uh, non-arterial project. It's going to be a mill and overlay, which means we'll remove the about first two and a half, three inches of existing asphalt. We'll put a new roadway surface down. And on the Eastern Street, we'll also be placing speed humps. Now, it's not just the road surface. Uh, some of the aprons of the driveway, the first five feet of the driveway, will also be replaced, as well as uh, the roadway striping and uh, traffic signs. And as you can kind of see from the map here, it goes from about Gilcrease Museum Road to about Union Avenue. And then uh, Edison down to about what's now reconciliation way down there in the south. And as Jeremy had stated before, this will be summer of 23 is when construction will begin. Uh, the contractor will work within the area to make sure that there's always accessibility. No one will be locked out of their property. You should be able to access your homes at all times. And uh, one last thing, uh, let's see that cover it all. Yeah, and then uh, sidewalk improvements. All the sidewalks that are existing or need to be repaired, we brought up to an ADA compliant sidewalk. And that's about all there is to that. Uh, any other questions? Awesome, I appreciate it, Robert, thank you. No Russell, do you have any comments or anything you wanna say? No, I think, uh, I think you two covered most of everything that we had, so, uh, so I appreciate you guys talking about that and, and sharing the information about the two projects that are gonna be working partially simultaneously. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Well, very good. Well, uh, again, my name is Jeremy Staley. Um, just want to let you know, if you do have any questions or comments over this, feel free to give me a call. My office number is 918-663-9401. Again, that's 918-663-9401. Or you can email me, and my email address is jeremy.staley at connectcec, jeremy, J-E-R-E-M-Y dot S-T-A-H-L-E 
at connect followed by cec.com. Uh, I look forward to hearing any of your comments. We will uh, take comments over the next two weeks and incorporate what we can into the plans and we'll do the best that we can to um, help meet your needs that still fall within the design parameters of this project. So uh, after that, this project will move forward into the queue uh, for construction for the city of Tulsa. And hopefully that should be occurring sometime late spring or early summer. Uh, I know they are planning to move out here in uh, another week or two on the first site for this year. And uh, we're looking forward to getting these speed humps constructed. Anyway, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you have a good evening. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jeremy. You are welcome. I am going to stop recording.